Hi there. In this video, we're going to take a look at event triggered campaigns. And I'm going to focus in on some of the new features that we've actually added to event trigger campaigns recently um, that help improve the workflow. Um, namely, what we've done is we've changed things up a little bit to now let you preview campaigns um, on test devices before launching them, publishing them, publishing them to the intended segment. Um, so this is good because it, it, it's, it kind of brings in some workflow improvements, um, but crucially, it makes it much easier to refine your campaigns and get them just right and test them on some test devices before then publishing it to the live audience. Um, so this gives you a bit more, a bit more confidence and a slightly improved workflow. Um, so let's go ahead and actually start setting up an event trigger campaign. We're going to switch across to my demo environment. And the first thing we'll do, because I can now run a campaign against a set of test devices, let's go ahead and set up a segment for those test devices. Um, we do that just like any other segment. I can do it as a metric segment or as an event-based segment. Let's just do this as a metric segment. And I've actually got a list of user IDs of some test devices I want to use. So let's just use a couple of them. If I come in here and look for the user ID metric and say when the user ID equals that or if the user ID equals and let's grab another one that lock that in and we'll give our segment a name so QA devices. Now if I were to save that as it is, that would just be a normal segment that can be used in any campaign, but I want to define this as a test segment and that's what this little toggle switch here is for. So let's say this is a test segment. This segment will now only be showing up when I'm putting campaigns into test preview mode. Um, so let's just save that down and we'll just quickly evaluate it, make sure it's picking up both those user IDs correctly. Yep, there we go. All good. So that's us now got a test segment, a couple of test devices defined. Let's go ahead and set up an event trigger campaign. So come into engage, and down onto the event trigger campaigns page. And you'll see that this game actually already has a few campaigns in the list. Um, two of them are paused. They're not active at the moment. One of the campaigns is active. And this one up here is also active, but it's in test mode. So we can tell when we've got a campaign in preview test mode and um, because the icon is different we've got a little spanner up here and we've got a, a test tag um, preceding the name um, so let's go ahead and create a new test and for the purposes of this example let's say that we know from our data that one of the missions in our game is just a bit too difficult so we want to use this campaign to catch players that are failing this difficult mission we're going to present something to them that's going to make their life a little bit easier. And hopefully that's that's going to stop them churning, keep them in the game, keep them happy. So give the give this campaign a name. So say mission three, too difficult. Uh, we're not going to bother giving it a description, but let's just, just so it's actually easier to see in the list, although this isn't going to really influence the priority. We'll give it a priority of 10. Um, the reason I say it's not going to influence priority is there are not going to be any other campaigns that have got the same trigger events on them. So um, we can, with an event trigger campaign, set it to run just a, for a specific date range. And this is a feature you would use if you have a special event happening at the weekend or a holiday event or something. If you have a very specific timed event, in this case, we know this is something that is, is happening all the time. We're just going to start this campaign when we want and leave it running forever until we until it's a stop. Um, so we don't bother changing those, just leave those to start immediately and run forever. The players we want to target this with, let's just choose the entire audience. This is our, our player segment list, um, but in this case, we're just going to let this run for the entire audience. And if anybody hits mission three and starts failing it, then we're going to try and do something with them. The next thing we want to define is the trigger event. Um, so this we're just going to use one of our events. And what's going to happen is 
when the player triggers this event in the game, um, our action is going to strike, our campaign is going to activate. So because this is all about failing mission three, we're using the mission failed event. And we're going to refine that criteria a bit with a specific mission. So mission ID. So we're just going to say if the mission ID equals three, when you see a mission failed event, if it's mission ID three, then we're going to do something. Um, and the action we're going to present to the player, um, we're going to give them a 200 gem gift, which will let them buy some armor or better weaponry or a power up to help them through mission three. We can measure the conversion event. So this is how we measure whether our campaign is a success or not. And we can do that by tracking the mission completed event for mission ID number three. Equals three. Um, so that's our campaign action more or less ready to go. We've defined, we said it's going to target all the players. Um, if I go to the summary page, I've got this confirmation page, I hit next. You're actually going to see confirmation of everything we've set up here. So targeting all players when it's mission failed for mission ID three, we're going to give them 200 gems and we're going to consider this a success if we see a mission completed event for mission ID three. Under normal circumstances, you can just publish this and that is it live and active, but we don't want to publish it just yet and target all players. We want to test this on some of our QA devices. So let's start this up as a test. This is the, the bit that's new. Hit the start test button. Here's a list of test campaigns. So this is the campaigns that I've defined with that little toggle switch to say this is a test campaign. And that's the one we just set up. So let's use this one and say choose that. And that's my campaign now off and running. There is their mission. Mission three is too difficult. It's at the top of the list. And I can leave that running. I can go and play around with this on my device. Um, in case you didn't know, if you want to see what is getting sent to the device, all the campaign logic, um, event trigger campaigns are downloaded at the start of the session. And you can use the setup, engage, configuration, trace tool to see what the configuration that's getting sent down to the SDK is for a particular user. So if I grab one of those user IDs we were looking at before, this one here, and say it's iOS, submit this. This comes back with the list of all the stuff that we send down to the SDK. Um, so this is telling us which events are currently allowed to be recorded, um, telling us if any decision point campaigns active, any images that are getting downloaded for caching to use in campaigns, and a list of the campaigns that have been sent down to the device, along with the content they will um, send to the device. Our new campaign that we've just configured and launched isn't in this list yet because there is a 10 minute period as a kind of 10 minute period before the campaign that you have launched um, is updated in the system and all the caches are refreshed. So we're a little bit early to see the one we've popped in there, but if you give it about 10 minutes or so, um, you can see what's happening there. So you can see exactly what's getting sent down to the device and you can start playing around on the device and seeing if what you've set up in the campaign when you fail mission three, does it give us the 200 gems? Does that indeed actually make the, the mission easy enough um, to get past? Um, and that's all good. Um, however, that's, that's where it starts getting interesting because what we can now do, because this is in test mode, we can edit the campaign. And this is the, the kind of the real benefits of the changes we've made here. We can now come in and edit the campaign um, really quite, interactively so we can iterate and campaign changes really quite quickly so i might say um my trigger action yep that was absolutely right but the content actually i don't think 200 gems is enough to buy me a decent enough weapon so let's up that let's change that a bit and give the players a thousand gem gift um and we'll save that and we'll come back to the confirmation page now at the moment we've just saved the change we haven't said start testing with that data yet so what we need to do is say new test and again just check i've got my my right segment going there and that's my test now updated and give it 10 minutes and you can go and start seeing if that feels better if that's going to work better for you um let's come back in again let's make another change i'll show you another couple of features of event trigger campaigns that i've not touched on um so we were giving the player thousand gem gift um 
what we can also do is we can A-B test this. So how about we, we're not sure if that was the right thing. Let's actually A-B test it and we'll try something different. Let's give them 50% um, extra gold if they do complete it. Um, so that's us now got an A-B test. I can save that. Come back along here. You'll now see this has this has changed. I've now got an A, a group and a B group with 50% of the players in each. There were only two players in my test, so um, <laughs> we should get one, one will get one thing, one will get the other. Um, but you can do this, it's really quite interactive now. You can iterate and refine your campaign a lot easier. The other thing you can do with event trigger campaigns, <clears throat> perhaps failing mission three once is okay. Perhaps that's not a problem. Um, maybe the data is showing that it's the players that have failed a couple of times, they're now starting to get lose interest. Um, so what we can do, let's put in an extra condition here and say, well, we'll present the action, but only on the second time we've triggered this. So we've just changed the behavior there. They've now got to trigger a mission failed event or mission ID 3 twice before we present these things to them. Um, so we can save that and come back to our confirmation page. Let's test those changes. Choose the QA group. And off we go. So that's our test changed again. So, um, and you can go through this process, refining until you what you're seeing in the device feels right, looks good, um, and you're happy with it. When you get to that point, you can now come back in and essentially publish your um, campaign, take it out of test mode, and let everybody see it. So, you can go back in here now and say, okay, now it's time to publish the campaign, and now your campaign is up and running as a full campaign. It's targeting all players. And there's the details, mission failed, conversion event, mission completed. Um, and as you're running the campaign, the this panel here will populate out with the details like you saw on this other one. Where's it going? That one there. So there's a running campaign. So when a campaign's actually up and running, you'll get a summary in here um, of how many participants you've got per day. If it's an A-B test, it will show you like this and it'll tell you um, number of participants, the conversion rate, whether there's a, a significant change. Um, you can drill into the actions. You can you can actually play around as well with different conversion and criteria. So this was measuring um, conversion against a transaction, but you can you can look at other, other events and see what that looks like. Um, so that's your campaign up and running. You can pause it at any time. Um, you can still make edits when it's in live mode, but there are some there are some restrictions to that. And what it will do is if you edit a campaign that's in flight, the players that are already in that campaign, it's going to keep them as they are. It's not going to suddenly change the whole user experience for them. It'll change it for new players coming into the campaign for the first time. So you'll see um, on the the variant list for the campaign, you'll get new variants added for new players that are joining as opposed to the existing players. The other thing you can do when we've, let's say we've had this campaign running for a couple of months <clears throat> and it's been doing great. The the players are no longer getting stuck at mission three um, and we're, we're preparing an update for the game um, and we're actually going to roll the changes that we've been the stuff we've been doing here, we're actually going to roll it into the, the game code. So at that point, when the new release goes out, we might say we can now finish this test, we're done with it. You could just do that by pausing it, but you can also hit this finish test button. And what it'll do is it'll um, it'll pause the campaign and archive it for you. So if I do that, let me just switch to my other one. So I'm, I don't want to pause this campaign, but I'll pause my demo one. Uh, let's finish it. The test will be paused and archived. That's OK. Finish. Um, so that's my campaign done now. If I come back to my campaign list, you'll see that that campaign is gone. There's the campaign that was running before and the other test. But my campaign has vanished. That's because it's now on the archive page. So if I hit show archive, there's the campaign we've just been working with there. It's been archived away. The data all still exists. I can open that up and view the reporting. Um, and if I had built any any charts in the analysis tools or published any dashboards based on the data from this 
um, campaign. That's all still going to be active. That's still going to be there. Um, but I've just archived the campaign away, hidden it, um, just so it's not um, not making a mess of my, my main campaign page. Um, other things you can do in the campaign page, you can filter. So let's see. You can, um, it's not uncommon... <clears throat> excuse me, it's not uncommon to see campaign pages where there are tens if not hundreds of campaigns so it's really important to be able to filter them so you can filter campaigns by name um, so let's look at all the free ones um, so you can just quickly filter by name you can also filter by a number of different properties so you can add tags to any of your campaigns so you use a tagging system to tag a campaign um, you can filter by any of those tags. You can also filter by the state of the campaign. So show me only the running ones, um, or show me the paused ones, etc. So you can filter that way. Um, so that that's really useful when you've got a long list with lots of campaigns in it. Um, so that's an overview of the event trigger campaign system. As always, if you need any help with it, um, check out the documentation or email us through um, the support system, create a support ticket. Um, and there'll be videos like this up on the documentation site as well. So um, thank you. Thanks for watching. Cheers.